this is Caleb. Yeah, I'm Andrew. And we're going to be talking about Marlin, which is now 20 years old. Well, now actually, 20 years old? I thought it was like 21. No. When, no, uh, no, no. It's 20. Oh, okay. Oh, so it came out in tw- In oh, November two. of... Yeah, it came out in 2022. Um, no, it came out in 2002. Speaking... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's no right, remastered okay. version that Bethesda's been... Please, I, I really don't want them to do that. They would just screw it up. I, yeah, they would ruin it. Um, no, 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 no. It, wait, it came out November twenty twenty or November twenty second to in the in the in Europe. In uh, in, oh. in North America. Well, that, actually, that uh, that was for Xbox in Europe. For Xbox mm-hmm. in in North America, it was June sixth. For PC, it was May second in Europe and May first for North America. So we've so we're ar- past the day. We are past. We we have already passed. So happy twentieth anniversary, Marwind, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Um. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna do some trivia here. Oh, we're gonna start um, off with trivia. That's seems we're gonna, yeah. I think starting off with trivia is the best route fine, to go. Fine, fine, fine. Go for it. Go for it. So, an actress and stay with me on this one. An actress who played a famous superhero role in the '90s voiced all the female Nords. Which uh, no, superhero did this I, actress play? Oh, which superhero? Is Storm. Yeah, I'm not gonna ask who the actress is. Okay. I don't even didn't even know Storm. that until I looked it up. No. You get three tries. I get three. Okay, you got, got to give me these rules first. Uh, fine, Supergirl. You're closer. Wonder Woman. You get one more. Yep. Yeah, Linda Carter, who all right, that, voiced that's... the original Wonder Woman, okay. did all, the voices for all the Nords in Morrowind, well, and I mean, apparently, uh, wait, wait, all the female Nords. You mean all the female Nords? Yeah, let's clarify here. But uh, um, obviously, but like they all have the same voice anyway. I don't think there are any unique female Nords in Morrowind. They're treated as well, a monolith, much like yeah, Bones. yeah. With well, you gotta imagine, like they probably had one sheet of paper with like the default lines, and she just went through. Well, yeah, you know? actually, th- I mean, you've heard about that for this is for Oblivion, right? Like they just each voice actor got all of their lines in alphabetical order, which is why sometimes the delivery is just completely off because they weren't they weren't given <laughs> context. Yeah, um, and I was gonna say apparently that was used in marketing. Too. They were I like mean, I Linda Carter. That, yeah. At the time, she would have been a very accomplished, successful voice actress, and it would be the same as when they did uh, again for Oblivion, uh, when they got Patrick Stewart to voice uh, Uriel Septim. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they got Sean Bean to voice someone in. in yeah, Iron? Sean Bean voiced Martin. Oh no! Yeah, right. sorry. Sean Bean was in Oblivion also. Who they get for? Yeah, Fire? yeah. That's... Did, didn't they get any celebrities to voice some guy in? Probably uh, not. Yeah, I guess the guy who did Arm no, Gear, but, the, so, the 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 gray beard, that guy, he died. That was Christopher Plummer, but like he died. Well, pretty, we were ta- really recently, I think, but he was amazing. We we were ta- we were talking about um, me we're and somebody else were talking about what the best. Yeah, but we can go a little bit off the path. Uh, that, we were talking just about comic. Keep going. Yeah, we were talking about um, Sean Bean and what's his best role he's died in, and he was like Martin. He literally oh. became. A dragon. Oh, are we, so. oh, are we talking about the one who, like, uh, which role he accomplished the most in? Yeah, I guess you could say Martin. No, no, what what the best death was. Oh, the, the best death? Well, I'd still say Boromir, then. Yeah, well, okay. That's actually, like, makes sense. Yeah, like, it's Bor- just amazing. Boromir is an amazing character. Unlike the book, when Boromir, like, what? dies, and they... In the book, they just have, um, what is it called? They sing a dirge. Yeah. Legolas and... Gimli, and then yeah. you know, send him off a cliff. They, they do but, more in the later books, because, but like Peter Jackson just wanted it all done in the beginning because it was like, why bring him up again in like four, five, in like five years when Return of the King came out? No one even remembered that guy, so they had to do it all then. Boromir's Otherwise, my favorite character, to be fair. Or yeah, he's my he, he's one of mine too. My favorite is Sam. Um, here's I'm going to give you a lowball question. Oh yeah. How many right. copies did Morrowind sell? By 2005. 20,000. Not. Oh, by 2005. Oh, uh, uh, f- uh, 100,000. It's in the millions. But oh, it's 5 million. You're, okay, I'll give I, it to you. It's 4 million. Oh, uh, what? I know that's just like, that, that doesn't, doesn't involve the game this, this much. Is, this, is, this is very odd choices for trivia. It doesn't feel like tri- Whatever. Okay, okay. Here's I thought one, it would be though. stuff that I'd have that you'd have to like play the game a lot to know, not just like random factoid. Keep going. No, it's. How many years was Morrowind in development? 
Oh, like five, right? It was a pretty long development, if I remember. Five, yeah, I think it was six. Six, okay, So you're okay. pretty close. It yeah, was I'll, I'll give that one to you. No, you shouldn't, um, but all right, I'll take it. Yeah, you'll take it. <laughs> and then we were going to, we proud. both. I like gold. For those listening and watching, we are going to go over what our favorite quests are. Um, I also five, made and then five honorable mentions. I think you said. Yeah, five honorable mentions. I had um, also a list of like just twenty iconic Morrowind quests that we can go over after because there were some that like I feel like they weren't the best quest in the game, but they're quintessential Morrowind. Uh, so you want to go first? What was the first one on your list, and why is it on your list? Okay, so I should clarify or qualify that I have a love of um, poetry, particularly epic poetry. So m my favorite is the slaying of the Udifrek, uh in the Blood Moon expansion, where the player essentially acts as Beowulf um, mm -hmm. and goes down into the ice cave in the lake, or, well, at the entrance of the lake, but, you know, whatever. Because the yeah. actual cave that at the bottom of the lake was used for a different quest. Um, but, uh, yeah, when you go inside and you find this Uderfrekt, which is some strange frost troll, uh, and, and he's very much this cannibalist... Uh, he's cannibalist. He's this weird monster. He, he gets called, like, a troll, you know, air quotes. Mm -hmm. But he's not really like that. He, but he, he's obviously some... He's Grendel. He's Grendel, obviously. Um, yeah. But even though it wasn't... Um, there, it, it's it's probably the the simplest quest that I have. It's go go to place and kill thing. The reference to yeah. it being Beowulf, and all of the very obviously Nordic, like uh, Icelandic, Scandinavian that that kind of Nordic influence uh, in the environment really immersed me in uh, that kind of environment, that atmosphere. It made me yeah. really appreciate even even as a kid i i had like i vaguely knew beowulf kill grendel that's it i loved it but n le reading beowulf learning more about it just made me love it all the more i was very grateful that uh whoever was writing that quest also thought that that would be a good addition yeah i was gonna say there is the additional uh did do you go to thirsk before or after to talk to people well, I went um, to Thirsk. I, at first, I, I didn't actually do the main quest. You have to do the main quest to unlock that quest when the Lake, lake Fjolling gets set on fire. Mm -hmm. um, and I had no idea that that was even a thing. So I, when I went to Thirsk, it was to get the Snow Bearer and Snow Wolf armor. But I also went inside and just looked around because it was cool. Um, was that when everything was... So after... Once the quest initiates, though, I'm pretty sure you can go in and everything's destroyed, right? Everything's destroyed. Can... There's a ton of arrows and that are like in the wall, and, and, and the posts are knocked over. Everyone but one person is dead, um, and she's the quest giver. Yeah. Um, and then I, this is me trying to like just remember if wasn't there an NPC up upstairs that you're supposed to help get back to Fort Frostmoth? Yeah, uh, for yeah. an additional quest, she Would... was she was actually she doesn't she doesn't die though. Anyone who's there, there are two NPCs that are upstairs, one who's just like some Breton bookkeeper, and the other is the Red Guard cleric. But like they're both in locked doors. Well, no. The, the... Oh, so neither of them die. No, no, uh, neither of them die. The quest. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, I was just wondering about that. Um... <laughs> in theory, you can uh... leave the Red Guard cleric on the bottom floor of the um, <laughs> and and then leave. And like that would, in in theory, she would die. I've never done that, so I, I don't. I don't yeah, why would? Happened. That's like uh, why would going you do into it? it. Yeah, I've why left. Would you, do uh, that? you know how with the Knights of the Nine quest line in Oblivion, you can have like members of the Order follow you around. Yeah, 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 yeah. at the end, you could leave. I like, accidentally. Or I accidentally did that one time. <laughs> I had to load a previous save. I was like, "Where is everybody?" And I was like, "Oh, I just left. I just a, I left the entire the Order Oblivion. in Oblivion. Oops, sorry." Yeah. It's like good luck, guys. Um, they fought. I'm glad you got but, Blood Moon. Well, they destroyed. I'm glad you got Blood Moon on there, like initially, because uh, or as your first pick, because I have a lot of Blood Moon quests as well. Oh, did um, you oh a lot of Blood Moon quests. I have like two. Okay, Cause, well, cause a lot is a relative term. Most of them, most of them are fairly uninteresting. They're just kind of like go here, kill thing, and it's not. Go ahead and tell me what your first quest is, but what I'll say is I picked my quests mostly 
for where it takes you in the game world how and how it mm -hmm. visually tells a story. There's a lot of visual storytelling uh, in the Ud effect slaying, but there's not a whole lot of visual storytelling in well, I won't say it yet, but go go ahead, go. Yeah. Um meet soul motto. That's the quest where you oh, go to the Sumatul, Ashlander yeah, camp in the Ursula Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. because I think that dungeon is probably one of the coolest or like the environment you go into the uh the burial it's not a dungeon. It's a the burial cavern. Oh, yeah, oh that, that one. I was like, wait, you, you like the one where you just go talk to him? Oh no, you mean the one? No, where, like, you have to go to and get, get and get the bow from his goat from his yeah, sister's be, ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like literally, the different mummies tell a different story because each I, of them have I different equipped items. I almost picked that one. I almost picked that one. It was, yeah, and, and it, it, uh, didn't, it didn't make it to my top ten though, or even my top. The uh, there was a lot of. Um, even the dead, like, adventurers, like, and it's true in other quests, too. Like, you could tell which one was a thief, because you just have, like, a lockpick and a knife, and then you could tell right, which ones right. were, like, armored up. And then also, like, uh... Strangely, a lot of the adventurers you find that are dead seem to be vampires for some reason, which is really weird. Um, but that was just... I like the atmosphere of the burial caverns. I like the... how the dungeons... or, or how the, uh... the caves are a little bit different than what you'd find in the game. Do you and remember that I, uh, one weird, like, um... He think he's called, like, the Worm Lord? There's just some, like, necromancer lich that's holed up in the, in the, in the burial caverns, and you, like, you have to... There's, like, a secret entrance that you can find him in. There's not a whole lot of loot, but it, it's just cool to see. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, I forgot about that entirely. Yeah. This, you see, I I, maybe played, I may need to go back and yeah, play. Yeah, I, I recently played Morrow in, like, a year, or, like... Yeah, yeah, about a year ago. And, uh... I go on Morrow and Binges, where, mm -hmm. like, I'll play... Oh, yeah, totally, like, totally. The game... But then after that, like my hands are off the game for a while <clears throat> mm -hmm. until I get that you know that urge itch. to yeah. go back. It's and every play. like couple of years for me, totally. I also What's like your number I, two? I tend to install tons of like mods. Uh, for me, my number two. So this this is the one that doesn't visually tell a story. It, it is through text and it's mostly comedic, but I I still love it mm -hmm. all the same. It's the Telvani Hortator quest. You need to get all of the members of this of this faction to name you their war leader. Um, the thing is, if you, and like it's a conditional thing, if you are mm -hmm. on their like grand council, uh, but you kill all the other counselors, you just, t because at that point you are the Senate, you can just name yourself Hortator mm -hmm. and your journal will like say that. It's like, as the only surviving uh, Telvani counselor, I name myself Hortator. And like, there you go, fulfill the prophecy. Like, that's amazing. Because it, it really felt like, Bethesda making the game accounted for player choice and said, "Oh yeah, you can do that." Like, like, wait, hang on a second. We, we, like, we, we've already said that the Telvani like kill each other to settle their disputes. So, like, what if the player just kills everybody because he feels like it? Well, then he gets to name himself yeah. as the guy who fulfills the prophecy, and and thus by saying he does, he fulfills the prophecy. He fulfills the prophecy. How about that? Like, that's funny. I like it. When you it, it when you would normally go how through crazy it? the Telvani are. Did did you normally? play through it that way where you just murdered everybody no or did no, you, no, no, no 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 not at all i, I was uh actually usually in my playthroughs or in, in a lot of my early playthroughs uh be, like bef before i was an adult when i was a kid i always picked house lalu the people who are all into commerce as an adult mm -hmm. i usually pick like house Redoron because they're warriors yeah. and duty bound and i like that um but i was all but like i've i've tried to role play it in that sense like a Redoron wouldn't just go around murdering Telvanis, you know. He'd at least try. So and and usually it yeah. works. I I was gonna say, so that's one of my I didn't do it in any particular order, but the next one on my list is uh the Redoron uh oh wait, did I not put it down in the end? Oh, I think I put it down as an honorable mention. Oh, okay. I really like the the Redoron Hortator uh Really? Uh, mission? Yeah, what? where you have to find the guy behind the. Oh uh, yes, yes. Okay, fine. Behind the curtain. I okay. I understand that one. I just feel that like, it, it, at the end, it, it devolves into an escort mission. It's like yeah, all right, that was. It, that's why it's an honorable mention. Yeah, yeah. Finding him is fun, and, but like once it's like okay, now now escort him out of the mansion. It's like oh well, I I, I finished that question five minutes. It's like also the there. NPC would get stuck on the bridge. Yeah, occasionally. Yeah, yeah. And it was just, like, super annoying. Bethesda um, AI pathing. They, they can't go. My, my next one is actually, like, because you just threw me off there with that. Uh, Mara, Milo, and the Lost Prophecies. 
explain what it's, happens. Is that the one where you have to talk to her or find her in the Ministry of Truth? Find her in the Ministry of Truth. Okay, that, that 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 is also fair. You get to you get to go somewhere new and cool, and depending on like what factions you're a part of, the 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 guards will treat you differently. I can appreciate that. Yeah, and I I just like you how spend, you like, basically have you spend all of like two seconds there. I hate, well, opinion. I like it how you have to get the uh, scrolls and basically develop an escape plan, and there's different ways you can plan yeah. it. It you felt know what strange I mean? to me just because at that point in time I had so far progressed uh, progressed past the need for a scroll of intervention. I had the spells yeah. and I had like enchanted lockets to do it. And it's like, eh, okay. It's just like it's like all right, fine. You want this? You tell me to bring two scrolls. And one of them's for me. I don't need this, but for sure, okay, fine. Uh, I, I, think I guess my I, greatest problem with that is like you don't get to explore. Um, you, you're, you're kind of disincentivized from exploring uh, the moon. I wish that you could. I, I, I mean, like this is kind of my fault, but like I, I've never gone back to check and see what else is in that place. I just get in there, try and avoid the guards, run to the, the prison keep, and then just free Milo and then leave. Yeah, it's it's bad. It's like there's certain quests that whenever you're high, like your character's leveled up, they're less appealing. Even though, yeah. um, even though they're like on their own, they'd be fine. I think also um, as cool as like uh, Mark and Recall are, they can be kind of abused. Uh, I, I understand. Sure. As much as I kind of wish that we we had stuff like levitating and, and teleportation in the previ- in the following Elder Scrolls games, I totally understand. You know, if, if your only object is to get in and then get out, once you get in and do your thing, you just set your your mark to like literally wherever, and then recall, and like now whatever danger that was present is just completely gone. I'm wondering, can you attach a constant effect recall to an item? I think like you, I never thought about that. I, I think the problem with that is that uh, it's like too. It's almost it's like impossible to set it because the enchant value of whatever item you're enchanting is not high enough. What for... if you had like a Daedric shield though? No, no, no. You like, know, like I, I think even that is not is not. It's enough. not high enough. I've tried going, I was say... I've tried going into the construction set and like making an item that can that has like a like a million or whatever enchant. Uh, value so that I can put whatever mm-hmm. I want on it and like after like it seems finicky I don't know how to actually like I, I've entered the number in but like the highest it appears to be able to go is like 90 or something it's weird oh uh, okay so it's it's a bit um, it's not really yeah what's your number two I, I guess this gave you my number, number three two. my number, number three, three um is a fighter's guild quest Ooh. where you have to kill an outlaw it's it's for the sage with more of a fighter's guild and they ask you to go like way, way north, and I think it's no, it's not not it's it's a little bit north, uh, basically up to like the next town over, and there are some islands. Uh, it's a bit it's a bit farther north than that, but uh, it's mm-hmm. uh, past like the the main coast of the north eastern tip, and were you referring to your map? Yeah, I just looked up. Just I, now? I, yeah, I've got the map framed I, on my wall. I have a so hang checking. copy of my map as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. I mean, I have, the, I have the copy. I showed you, right? I sent yeah. you a picture because I got the one that we used to use together framed. Mm-hmm. It's still, I still see, like, some of the tape on it. <laughs> anyway, because <laughs> from, like, when we folded and, like... I just had to it. ask because I saw you, like, talking about it and you're trying to get the, the region and then yeah, you just... It's keep, like, it's like, yeah, it's like, actually, where is that? No, yeah, so yeah. he was... The guy is just some dude. He's not all that important. But you learn, again, through visual storytelling, as well as just, like, pieces of paper scattered around, that he's, like, struck up a deal with a vampire. And the cave that you find him, that, that, that like, you go into, leads to uh, a, a tomb, a big mausoleum. And if you go in there and you're expecting to find this outlaw, you, do, you don't. You find this highly leveled vampire who if you're not like paying attention if you were, were not if you were thinking this is just some low level kill some some generic armored guy no she just murders you um and i liked how you had to like levitate to get to the secret entrance to his actual hideout but mm-hmm. there are scattered potions of levitation uh around in like the first area to let you know it, it just kind of subtly clues you in that like hey why is there like le- why are the levitation potions here what's up with that so it encourages you to look up 
at which point you see like the ledge and like, oh, I gotta go up there. And all of these like pieces of paper like giving f- fake orders are just that. They're just a red herring mm-hmm. to throw you off the trail. I liked how the they pulled that bait and switch, especially with not it wasn't just a oh, we've set a trap and it's uh it's actually just some skeletons. It's like that's boring. But this yeah. this this vampire is like a named character. She's really powerful. She has her own like artifacts, her own like well it's an it's an artifact. It's her own like special ring that like makes you slightly resistant to like normal weapons or something or something like that. And so it like like that feels like a vampire's thing, you know? Like, oh, you yeah. got you got to come equipped with like something better than than like normal cuz I think vampires by nature get like 50% resist against normal weapons and her ring gives her like another 30%. Which Whoa. means like, if you were if you were taking this as like a relatively low leveled character mm-hmm. and you walked in with like a steel longsword or something, she just like trashes you. Now at yeah, the time, at the time, uh, I was like, I usually do like the eastern uh, quests, the quests on the eastern side of the map more. So I'm already like, level mm-hmm. like twenty foot five or something, and I have like a really high level enchanted weapon. So I just like one tapped her or whatever. So it was very anticlimactic in that sense. But if, if I you felt were, so like, bad in my, hmm? oh, go ahead. <clears throat> Oh, I was just gonna say that uh, if you're playing the game, if you're playing the game probably as intended, and you're exploring for like the first time, yeah, M- Marara will probably demolish you, which is nice. Not just going to Caldera and selling your gear to, to the, the creeper to a yeah, stamp, yeah, and then doing yeah. training. Yeah, just yeah. going I mean, around to all the master trainers. I, I, was, yeah. I was guilty of that in like in pretty much every playthrough I've ever done, which I, I feel like I, I, I try to not do that in the beginning, but then like. Growth is just so slow. It's like why would why would yeah. you? It's like I know how to make myself like a god. Why would you not just take? Why would you not do it? Yeah. Um. Right. Speaking of gods. Oh okay. My I next. I, know, I think I know what yours is gonna uh, be. I like the Mad God. I knew it. I uh, knew it. I have. You know why? I, well, I enjoy going to the Clockwork City. Okay. Um. I I, I, I enjoy the reveal I, at the end. Okay. Fine. That's fair. Like. If it was, if it was, uh, I don't know. The, the problem is that, like, any any final level or final quest in a quest line that is go to place and kill lots of things, I'm not going to rank it very high, just because. But it wasn't. There was traps. That's what I'm saying. It no, wasn't okay. like a there, conventional. There were, there were a lot of traps, but like, the problem is and, that Marwind excels, in my opinion, when it focuses on atmosphere and storytelling. And not and like not in combat. Combat is where is where the entire Elder Scrolls well, is like you're not you, you should not like I, or rather I don't play these games for the combat because I I, be I, I, bored. I I but this is the thing though if if it was just like a dungeon like a normal dungeon <laughs> delve where you didn't like I thought that the traps especially in Morrowind made it stand out more as being unique really because they didn't do as much of that stuff till. You got to tribunal, um, and uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, the like for example, like the massive hammer, where you had to time it perfectly to yeah. make it into the uh, um, okay. You had to time it the next room. You had to time it perfectly, but like they knew that like almost no one would be ready for that, so they just let you uh, have all those respawning robot guys. Who, if you like, kill them, then drink their elixirs. You like just go they, like super fast. They they essentially just gave you like free skewer bottles. They said, "All right, just go nuts." And like that's what I did. I would just drink like fifty of them, and then like I could outrun it for like ten seconds. Yeah. Um. What What are the? It's they're not the fabricants, but what's the massive golem that you have to fight? Oh, Isn't that guy's like called a, the Im- the imperfect. And the honestly, imperfect. that was that was like the second best part of the quest for me was when you walk forward and you hear this like horrible like clanking grinding mm-hmm. sound and then like he just he just gets up that was amazing like i, I that a... was and of course the best part of that quest for me is the reveal yeah the reveal at the end with uh sotha sill correct yeah, yeah, yeah. is that the correct pronunciation uh, i think uh, you I see think different characters pronounce it differently okay yeah but him just hanging there and then uh you know the review at the end i i felt like I got more out of the Mournhold quest having completed the main quest first, and I think that's supposed yeah, to that, be... Yeah, that's fair, because it's, it's supposed to be end, more endgame content. Yeah, because whenever she's, like, calling you Lord Nerevar, or calling you the... If, if you, know you haven't I mean? played if you haven't played any of the, the main quest, it just makes no sense, you're right. Yeah, but it makes no sense If you complete no the main whatsoever. quest and... Well, the, the problem is that, like, if you've completed that's the main quest... That's hilarious that you knew I was gonna... 
If you complete the main quest and you go to tribunal and Almalexia does not immediately talk to you and be like, you're back, it's, it's kind of strange. So it almost seems like you're supposed to be like halfway through the main quest and like mm-hmm. you're starting to get the, the, fee- the sense of like, oh yeah, I am this guy. And then she kind of confirms it like that. But you can't sense. do that because the Dark Brotherhood agent is just going to show up and shank you anyway. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Yeah, that feature was like kind of. It really broke the game because if you had like a dagger that causes paralysis or paralyze, you could just hit the Dark Brotherhood agent once and then go to town on him with yeah. a ton of hits. Well, and also, then you could sell you his him? armor and yeah, level you up. Sell, you, level sell up. His, you sell his gear, and you all of a sudden you have because his gear was was really really expensive. At least the, the, the chess piece, the curious, is like a thousand yeah. gold pieces, which you give that to a person at level two, and it's like, wait a minute. Like, a, a that smart, was just weird. You, it's like, imagine giving like someone who's like 18 years old like two and a half million dollars. And then, what, and, you what they like, sh- you, and then like you watch as he invests like, in, in, in like an index fund or something, and he never works another day in his life. <laughs> I, I feel like they would have uh, like, been would you cool expect? if they, like Like, the actual concept of having an assassin go after you like whenever you go to sleep is a cool concept. But they should have had it start like when your character was like level like a couple levels up. You yeah. know what I mean? Like there's a once you pass this threshold and then you sleep, this is gonna somebody's gonna try to assassinate well, you. Well, yeah, because the idea is that Helseth is trying to eliminate any any threats to his throne. But like when you are just like come fresh off the boat, you're nothing. You're nobody. Yeah. How, how one? How does he know who or where you are? And two? How does he think you're a threat? <laughs> he's just gonna kill everybody, and the then... emperor is like, "Well, I think he's a Nerevarine, and that's why he tells Caius Casades to like take you mm. in." But like, how does Helseth know all of that? He yeah, doesn't. how's all the information spread? Yeah, um, I'm ready for your next. I'm ready for your next one. Okay, so this one is not the. It's not uh, the entirety of the quest. It's just like half of it, which like I. I personally split this this up into like two different parts, but I split up acquiring Sunder and Keening from Red Mountain. Excuse me, acquiring the the, the Kagernex tools from Red Mountain, and then actually going to the inner facility of Dagoth Error and like actually doing the final bit of the quest. I because what I always do is I take make take a round circuit around Mad, Red Mountain, mm-hmm. past the Ghost Fence, and go to all of the citadels. Uh, because when you, I mean, part of it's just for completion's sake, but it's really nice to get a sense of um, what the who the ash ash vampires are. If you killing all of them and getting like their specific in, enchanted like amulets and belts and all of that, really gives you the sense that you're you're making a surgical strike against this person and all of his top lieutenants. Um, Sunder and Keening as as a just just like lore tools, not even weapons. As weapons, like mm-hmm. they, they they suck. There's a reason no one ever uses these things. <clears throat> that that at least that I know. Um, but even just their enchantments give you insight as to like what these were intended for. It's it feels like a great way of giving you a ton of lore or reinforcing a lot of lore that was already just like exposited to you through documents in Vivex Palace. Uh, and I, I loved being able now, to Now, what go... are some of the enchantments? Oh, okay. What are the enchantments on the so, items? Because I don't remember off the top of my head. Well, I, I do. I remember that uh, Sunder gives you, like, better attack. Sunder is like the hammer. Sunder gives you, like, better attack mm-hmm. values. So, like, you're more likely to hit. It gives you a shield. I think it, like, drains your personality or, like, your endurance or something. But it gives you, like, better strength or something. And then Keening, mm-hmm. I think Keening buffed Agility, I believe, and then something else. Um, so you you like, and I was going to say, just to switch back real quick, you enjoy the going to the different facilities prior to the strike where you go and fight Dagother? Yes. Uh, go, like, I mean, you said you wanted to divide the quest into two parts. Yes. I do enjoy going to Dagother's main facility in the center of Red Mountain, that visual before you get there of like the 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 mountains just like sunken in there's like smoke coming up and then you have to like hit the the lever and then get in quickly before the door closes and then Dagoth is speaking to you as you descend that's all yeah. great the problem is that like I can't help but think of the last part of that quest when you actually get to him oh talking with him 
ask him all the questions, that's great. A like, giving different answers and seeing how he reacts is, is a lot of fun. But once you actually get into the heart chamber, you hit you hit um, you hit the heart once with Sunder. You smack it a couple times with Keening. All right, it's over. Main quest is kind yeah. of yeah, and it's like oh, do you know, do you I, know I, I why though? Was, I mean, I'm sure there were time constraints or something. Well, that I was gonna say that that I I watched a video on it, and apparently it's because they literally were running out of time before release. That's why Red Mountain seems like I mean it's cool. They but it seems like it was kind of hastily there, there put together. There was a together. ton of buildup, and at the very end, it just, it's like, oh, okay, if that's it, ship it. I'm like, all right. Did uh, you like how instance, it was hard like, to navigate Red Mountain, though? Yes. Like, sorry, I didn't mean to cut in, but... Uh, as I, as like, a kid, I, I hated it. As an adult, I really appreciate that uh, what they did. I'll say this. One other thing that I loved re- regarding the buildup was uh, something I appreciate more is the learning about the Sixth House, then the Nerevarine Prophecies, then like going to Vivek, collating these all together, um, learning how they, they interact, and then finally going to getting to go to Vivek's palace um, and reading all of like the documents and seeing the different sides and forming my own conclusions. Mm-hmm. Um, I really liked that. I, I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, but like I can't. That's like that. That's like ten different quests. So you know, not not one. So yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah well, one. the main. I think. I think the main quest was like phenomenal. I just think at towards because it was towards the end of development. Whenever they finished the, uh, yeah. the quest line, like because I think we've talked about this before. It's like you almost like you became a leader in all these different factions across Morrowind, mm-hmm. and yet like none of them showed up to help you as like go yeah. destroy Red Mountain. Although with how awful the follow is, you know, or how awful the sometimes the NPC movement is. Can, considering how how non not non unintuitive combat in Morrowind in general can be sometimes I'm kind of glad they they de-emphasize that yeah for sure in for hindsight. sure um well I mean one great thing was that you could go to ghost you, you could go to ghostgate or you could just like fly past and say who cares but if you go into ghostgate you can talk to one of the boy and armigers and be like hey so like what what are we doing here and he'll just like hand you a map like up uh, he, uh, up to this point you don't like have a map of this place, and he just gives you a map, and it's like okay, cool, and uh, it really it gives you the, the the feeling of like, oh, this is a this is a place that is incredibly dangerous. There's no transportation in or out, like mm-hmm. some like very like skilled elite level like recon trooper is giving you like his best estimation of where things are like good luck i, I i'm not going in there with i you, i was i have an honorable mention that ties into red mountain while we're still here um okay. i didn't i didn't it's not like a single quest like you were saying earlier i love the temple quest at the end when you had to go and recover all the uh basically the the oh um, yeah yeah the the the, 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 different the equipment relics. from fallen yeah yeah yeah, yeah from the fallen from the, members from of the, the temple because yes yeah, because it's just like, but the problem with that quest is like, if you do that before you, you know, are further along in the main quest, it's mm-hmm. like you've already been to all the locations, and then it, you're just headed back to kill the Ash Vamp. So it seems like you're double dipping. Yeah, you know, that's, what, you that's why I do it. it well. I do, yeah, I do it at the same time. Um, I think if, yeah. if you go to Red Mountain to, when you have to, to finish because if you progress quest. in the main quest, I was just yes, gonna say if yes. you progress in the temple quest, you can't actually become the Grand Master unless yeah you haven't progressed in the main quest well i mean or you, or you have to wait till you're finished with the main quest um the yeah. problem with going to the... well they won't let you join the temple they won't let you join the temple if you completed the main quest if i remember correctly oh really i, I didn't know yeah that. weird i always join yeah because basically like... think about the in lore explanation too like basically these people are like oh the ashlanders are stupid their religion isn't like legit and hmm. you know so they're not gonna like allow the guy who basically fulfilled the prophecy that they were saying was wrong hmm. to be the leader of their faction. You hmm. know. Okay. I uh, I know that if you go to 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 Red Mountain and go to the different citadels, and then you leave, and then you come back, but this time people tell you that it's really really dangerous, even more dangerous than the last time. It doesn't have the same effect. It's like ah, I've done this before. It's yeah, just, we're just yeah. going a bit farther. Been now. there, yeah, yeah, been there. Been um, there. I have a odd quest for my next one. All right, uh, Shea Gorath and the I uh, considered fork. 
I considered, of her appellation. I considered putting this one on here, but I decided against it. I mean, it's because the quest is so simple. On, but, yeah, but it's like I had to have one that's just like outright fun. Mm -hmm. And like getting a fork and stabbing a, uh, what was it? Like Bull a Netch. massive netch. Bull Netch. Bull Netch. Yeah. yeah, that was super satisfying. And it was, I mean, it's perfectly in line with uh, Shea Gorath, too. Although, so, I, don't, I don't know how you prefer to do that quest. I generally get that, get that quest done when I'm a bit of a lower level. So what I'll do is take a weapon I'm better with, smack it a couple of times, and then just kill it with the fork. Because he specifically says death blow. As in, you don't have to use it the entire time. Yeah. I kind of think it's funny, or it's kind of hilarious, though, to just keep stabbing it with the fork repeatedly. That, that, that um, is, I, guess that, it, I think that's the intended idea that, that, that Shagaroth wants you to do, because he wants to laugh at you, kill a, what's, what amounts to a giant cow, a giant flying cow with a fork. That's hilarious. If anyone was watching, they, they would start laughing. I know I'd start laughing. Yeah. And the thing is, I can't really say much more about that <laughs> quest, because that's literally it, but... And the yeah. reward's cool. That's why I didn't mercy. It, because it's just, it's, it's, there's not enough going on. Yeah, yeah. It the was spear, just... though, was amazing. It's the second best spear in the game. Um, alrighty, what's your next one? This, is, this one's probably going to be a bit controversial. Um, and I know, it's, I know that like when we were playing, neither of us enjoyed this one when we were kids. But like as an adult, mm -hmm. even, even with like all the, the backtracking and... and just running around it requires i still love it for sh giving a nice crash course on the different parts of geography as well as going a bit, even a bit further and i'm talking about the skull test of loyalty in blood moon where you have to activate all of the standing stones do all of their stupid quests their stupid mini quests because really this is like five black or six, horker this is like five or six quests in one yeah actually that one's not like the worst that is not the worst. No, one. I like that one. I, I, I the this worst is on one, my honorable. The worst one mentions. is the. Uh, oh, really? The, the worst one yeah. is is uh, the good beast. The beast stone is stupid. What what is fun, however, is the the test of wind. That one's fun because it introduces this idea of the greedy man, who is not talking mm -hmm. a whole lot. But if if you read like the lore, his name is also Thart. He's, he's the adversary. He's greedy. Mm -hmm. He's the greedy man. But he's also Thartag, the World Devourer, which is another name for Alduin. So, how did Alduin show up to the Skull Village and then steal all of the wind? I don't know. But, like, that's really interesting to think about. Uh, I also liked the Test of Light. Uh, yes, that's, that's my go, favorite, going, I would yeah, say. Yeah, that was the best one. Because the, dark, the, the deep darkness, the Draugr running at you with their, like, inhuman speeds is very creepy. Their eyes glow. And then finally seeing because you can see the light behind the wall the ice wall but then the light keeper mm -hmm. grawl like just walking at you and like to the light shining on his back which means his face is even more in shadow leading to a very like and he's huge so it, it's mm -hmm. it's creepy it's very atmospheric you can tell that this is like the only bad thing about it is that it ultimately is not super important and it's very early on in the quest line if they had given that uh, that interaction, that encounter, a bit more weight, that would have been incredible. But as it stands, uh, yeah, that's, that's my, my, my bit. With the Earth Stone, wasn't it just uh, messing with the uh, stalagmites? Yeah, that that um, was fun. That was fun. But, like, yeah, that was That it. one wasn't a standout. I don't think that one was a standout. Getting to play music uh, in Morrowind is fun. But, yeah, but that, that was a whole lot. Following, following the Horker was just cool because you had to, like, like... I guess trust where it was going because it's so far off mm. off of Solsheim. I remember playing the island. playing Morrowind and just going out to sea, and I was convinced there would be like some huge like sea monster that would come along and, and eat you if you yeah. went out too far. They they didn't they didn't do that. They just like designed endless endless ocean, so you'd never Excellent. get anywhere. But I yeah, was going to say the right. um, the. Uh, mm -hmm. What I liked about Blood Moon, just in general, is if you actually had the difficulty turned all the way up, and you like went there even with your like with decent gear, you was still extremely difficult, like mm -hmm. fighting the werewolves. Because I my last playthrough I did, my character was like high leveled, but I went to Solstheim with like nothing, as like part of a challenge, and my guy kept dying during the quest line, especially with the uh, the werewolves. Mm -hmm. um, and that's this is a controversial pick. 
for sure. It's not going to be on your list. Uh, the Totem of Claw and Fang. What? And Why the that reason... one? That one's just no, all no. combat. There's all combat. No, no. But because, and it was my recent experience that made me choose this one. Because it's extremely difficult. If you from, have, from like, I mean, werewolf? as far as the difficulty, from, are you playing? Is that the one where you not, play? As not the as a werewolf. werewolf. Oh no, you're the one I'm, playing I'm saying, as a skull, trying to get the totem, not yeah, keep it. Oh, yes. okay. That is much more difficult, and it provides like a fun combat challenge that, like, normally in Morrowind, I'm not challenged. Like, or, I mean, I guess I'm not like worried when I go into combat. Mm-hmm. But literally, if you just go in, you know, with your medium like level, medium tier equipment, yeah, you're likely to die. Yeah, unless you, you, you land it out slaughter. well. The... Yeah, and I like that because it provides like an element of danger in a <laughs> See, game where like... my See... character was like well but, but, already wait, well I want to know leveled. why would you pick that? Why would you pick if, if if it's a if it's the danger of and the thrill of combat? Why would you not pick uh... Percy's Hunt? Yeah, why would you not pick the one in the glacier Be... where you have to keep a companion alive and like there's a much much different I, I think much more interesting environment. And, like, everything's much creepier. And, like, there's the statues, and you can't use wide area of effects spells because you could just kill Captain Carrius or whatever. I think it's because there's... I, I thought about this today, actually, because I was going back and forth which one I was going to put on the list because that was one of my honorable mentions. I think it's because it kind of smacks you in the face with the werewolves. It's not like... I, I Like... Oh. I, for her scene's hunt, it's almost like... You're expecting You know, it, it was... Yeah, but you you don't expect to go oh, into this tomb and find so the werewolf. So it's the anticipation, the suspense, and the surprise. Yeah, because okay, if you, okay. That's like fair, I said, that's fair. Because the the tombs of Scalara do, do end up looking a lot creepier, even if they're less overtly sinister, like uh, Hersine's Hunt is. Yeah, Hersine's Hunt's great. It's like I said, it's one of my honorable mentions. But I feel like it's like I knew it was coming. The first time, I knew the it was first, coming. Well, the first time Heartfang betrays you was like. That blew my mind as a kid. Like, what? He was that a bad was guy? Because like, I was, I was, that... I was used to like, oh yeah, the leaders of the the sub factions are good people because Carius is a good guy. So I was expecting Heartfang was just like a gruff but overall good person. He's like, actually, I've been evil this whole time. Like, what, yeah. what do you know? Time to die. And... That was a good plot twist. For that was sure. that was a very good plot twist. And is uh, Hercene's Hunt on your list? Is that your next no, one? No, n- not at all. It's not at all. Because it's a giant okay. combat fest, and there's nothing. There's all of the like. There's not enough lore, and what lore is in there is delivered entirely through her scene talking to you. Even though her scene is the coolest part of that quest, yeah. And I think of, of Blood Moon as a whole, getting to getting to like. I actually don't remember aside from Battle Spire. I don't. I don't remember any other instance where you where the player gets to duel a daedric prince yep getting to fight her scene get not only that but getting to pick which aspect of him you'll fight obviously i i, I always pick aspect of god you want the spear well, everybody wants the spear the spear because well for one the spear is the relic it's the unique thing mm-hmm. even though the amulets you get the amulets that you get for either strength or speed give incredible benefits they're not good enough to just to like justify removing any other piece of gear, and they use mm-hmm. generic uh, textures and meshes. So it's yeah, like, so it's, why a would you, it's, it's just an exquisite amulet with a fancy name. Well, but if now, you wouldn't pick, that if you suck spear, if you didn't have the it wiki? Is the best spear in the game. Yes, it would suck if you like. Imagine where we would be without the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages. So, yeah, I mean, like, imagine, for your, for your take service, yourself man, back. Man. Take yourself back to two thousand two. <clears throat> When the game was first, re- well, I guess it'd be further along because O3 they had Blood, they Blood Moon was released. I think, oh, yeah, I think Blood yeah. Moon was released in 03. Yeah, so think about 2003, it's your first time playing, and you go for the wrong item at the end. That would suck so bad. Actually, what I did first, before I even had the wiki, I picked Strength because I was like 12, and I was like, yeah, Strength is cool, right? Strength, and, yeah. And I was like, I wonder what happens if I pick something else. So I picked Speed, and I was like, okay, that was pretty cool. And then I picked Guile because I was like, what's Guile? So I, yeah, I, I know. I, That's why I picked it too. Because I picked like... Guile, and it's like he just shrunk. And at first, I was like, "Well, that's stupid." And then, like, well, then, like he then he fights you, and it's like, "Oh, this guy's actually way way harder than the others." Um, but once you beat him, you get the best spear in the game. Not only in terms of damage, but like it's it's a uh, it's enchantment is amazing. Even if they resist the the, the paralyze, 
they'll probably get hit with like burden, and then they can't move anyway, and so you can um, just keep wailing on them. That 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 was, it, it felt like, mm-hmm. just the idea. I mean, I know I I've been ragging on on Marwin's combat, but like the fact that they put they put you against an actual Daedric Prince makes up for the fact that it's not all that impressive. And I know you might be thinking, well, hang on a second. What, shouldn't you bump up Realm of the Mad God then? Or not Realm of the Mad God. The, the Mad God. <laughs> Realm, Realm of the Mad God is a different game entirely. But shouldn't yeah. you bump up the going into the, into the Clockwork City? Uh, no, because... Clockwork fra- City fra- was fra- better. Frankly speaking, frankly speaking, the Fabricants aren't as cool as werewolves. I will say the Clockwork City, though... The environment just doesn't feel... The... It, it doesn't feel like a genius contraption. It feels like... The Clockwork City feels like a giant saw set. It just feels like a set for, the, for like one of the Saw movies. That's what that feels like. Why are there all these death traps flying around? If so, if, if nobody can get to it, and so the Sil spends all of his time in seclusion, what does he need all this stuff for? You, yeah, it you have a like, good point. It feels like a movie set, or rather, it feels like a level designed for a video game. Rather than Mortar uh... Glacier, which is explicitly designed for people to, 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 to have to go through it. Like, it's supposed to be a gauntlet. Yeah, it's a, it's a death trap. Yeah, her scene wants it to be a death trap. Fight fight as hard as you can. The level design's too fun, though. I, I can't... No. That's why I can't back off it. The, because it's, no, it's, the, the traps it's are enjoyable. just goofy. Dude, whatever, okay. whatever, fine. Well, when I, okay, keep, we're going to have to agree to disagree. I knew yeah, this we'll was going to bring up... We can talk about it later. It's not... It's, not, it's Whatever. What's your, what is your so have you done all five correct yeah, or have you fifth? done four I've done five what's your fifth no I said it was the totem of claw and fang oh right right my fifth was the small yes. test of loyalty I guess I, should I go so with, honorable I actually, mention I actually have wait one two three four five six I actually have seven honorable mentions I do not have five runner ups I have seven runner ups I will I will trim I have it five. down I will tr- I'll trim it down to, to 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 just five and in no particular order. I pick, um, let's see, Ooh, I, let, I'll pick the Blade of Nerevar, where you actually have to go to um, D- Dwemer Ruin that I don't remember the name of, but I know that if I did remember the name of, I wouldn't be able to pronounce it. The ones where you blow up the C4 to get in through holes. Yeah, 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 that, that was great. But the, my favorite part of it is going to the Daedric Ruin inside the Dwemer Ruin. Yeah. Uh... Not only all of the treasure that you find, but there is one room in the Daedric Ruin where you there's like just a ton of statues to Daedric princes. There's nothing in the room besides just... besides the statues. There there's I think maybe like a couple Atronachs or something like a Storm mm-hmm. Atronach or something or a Frost Atronach or like a a Wing Twilight, and you can't interact with any of the statues. They don't talk to you. Just the fact though that even within even like within the like the Dwarven ruins were built on top of, of uh, Daedric ruins, and the Dwarven ruins, or sorry, and, and the and Mornhold was built on top of Dwarven ruins. It's, it, it's great visual storytelling. It's like there was a civilization here, then there was another, another civilization, and now we have ours. And getting mm-hmm. to peel back all the, lever, the, the, the layers, but also it's not just that, um, not just that room, but every, pretty much every room. In, uh, in the Daedric Ruin, inside the Dwarven Ruin, but also getting to talk to, um, I don't remember what his name was, Radumak or something, the the Dwarven Spectre who, like, mm-hmm. he's like, he's some, some kind of weird sorcerer engineer, and he's like, I'm just a soldier. You want your blade to be on fire? Okay, give me, give me, give me the fire oil. I'll put it on, yeah. sure. And then you get the, the giant flaming sword. And uh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, honestly, like, I, like, didn't put that on my list, but that would be, like, like anything involving those dwarven room, ruins would be, like, um, what is it called? Is high up on my, like, mm. would it be high in my ranking? Any dwarven um, ruin, or specifically... No, specifically one that one. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I got, okay, my first one, I'm not gonna repeat it, the Skull Test of Loyalty oh. for Scenes Hunt was also You picked those two on as there. well? Okay, okay. Yeah. Um... But my next one, Lasarius Varro tells a story. Oh, uh, I like it because it's basically he's oh, saying oh, you need guy... to go kill this group yes. of people yeah, yeah, without yeah. actually outright saying that. Yes, yes, and then he gets he's going to go kill them. The I mean, I like that 
he uh, he kind of talks about corrupt officials. I don't like that that corrupt official is not actually present in the game. But you know. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I had it on there because I thought that it was just like a, the dialogue was interesting in the way that you went about the quest. The quest basically is go murder a ton of people in this building which in Belmora. I I don't, but, which is why I wouldn't put that high. But I can see why you yeah. liked it, yes. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't um, actually have this one on my list, but I would also include for, for Balmora quest about fun dialogue would be the one where you have to solve that guy's murder. And like you never, oh, find, yeah. you never find any specific um, uh, evidence that like one hundred percent ties X or Y to the to, to the murder. But like, there's enough circumstantial evidence for you to be like, I'm pretty sure it was this guy. And uh, the ga the game seems to support that, so it's it takes away a little bit of the fun because if the game just says like, Yep, you got it right, it's like, oh, okay, well. There was like not a whole lot of, not a whole lot of detective work going on, but there was a little bit, and I, I appreciate that. Um. Next one, for my list, uh, Lord's Mail and the Grandmaster's Duel. I put them together. Oh, you and picked that one? Did, I thought about the, it. But. The, now this is this is why I picked it because I think the whole idea of you basically equipping the guy who you're going to be in a duel with with the best equipment possible. That's why I paired the two together. Oh, because okay. So, but you, you would have also have to include Chrysomir then, right? The, the weapon, yeah, the weapon you yeah, get yeah. So I, I would include that. Um, okay, I just... now, now I get it. I see you putting those three together as... It, it's an interesting arc of... Here, let, let me like make the guy I'm going to kill as powerful as possible and then still beat him. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. A, it's a and bit too end, short feel... for it to be a satisfying narrative arc, but I can see, I can see how you like it. Mm-hmm. Uh... Next on your list. Well, I talked about... Um, I don't even remember what, that, what the quest I just talked about was. Uh, I, wow, so that's embarrassing. Uh, but I, I, it wasn't actually on the list. I would pick uh, going to Mamiya, the sixth house base where one of the informants early on in the main quest tells you his son was going to. But did like, it's like he's going to chart these uncharted caverns and then he gets taken mm -hmm. prisoner. It's not so much... Uh, what you find there, although you do find a number of, or at least one uh, artifact, which is this like weird storm crocodile, lightning lightning breathing crocodile thing from the from from Black Marsh. You find one of his like teeth there as a dagger, and it's pretty neat. It's I mean, it's cool as like a, a little set piece or as a little um, artifact, but it's not actually valuable. Wait, so like is this the or, uh... What's the name of the actual quest, though? It's called. I want to make sure. I'm... It's just. It's just. I don't. It's, it doesn't really have a. a for, I, I think it, it does have journal entries, but it's called Mamia. M A M A E A. It's just. It's just finding this dude's like lost son. He's like, I haven't heard from my son. What's he doing? And you you go to this place and you you just spring him out of out of jail. But the reason that I picked it is yes, it's because you find an artifact there that that's fun. And it, it's certainly not because you go around and kill a bunch of Sixth House cultists. Uh, it's because the interior of it is unlike anything else. You're used to caves being very dark, very, like, muted, yeah. washed-out browns and grays and sometimes, like, beige. <clears throat> or, like, a very, like a very uh, muted, dull beige. But you go to Mamiya, and most of the cave is like this bright white sandstone white, yeah. cavern, and it's like you're not near the coast. You're this is this is not that there's no there's not a whole lot of sand in Morrowind. So to see a, just a a, a a a cave complex that's almost entirely like sandstone, uh, way out in like this sort of sparse sparsely green area. It was so shocking. It was so different. Well, it, in it some of the six house out. spaces, it stuck out so much that I, I, I always want to know more about it. And like, why did they pick this tile set for for this place? And uh, it was a lot of fun to explore it, even if at the end all you find is one dagger that doesn't do a whole lot. And but and the like, guy's son. You find the guy's son. I should say that. You see, like six house bases are normally like creepy, like like oh, you know, they look almost satanic, you yeah. know, on the inside and. The walls definitely because I I had forgotten completely about that area, mm. and I thought that I wondered about the tile set too. 
why why they just decided to switch it up for that one. It's like with one guy, like, hey guys, let's just do this to. I don't. I don't it must have been early on in development, and they were like, let's use this tile set. They made it, and they're like, ah, it's never not really mind. Doing it. And it's like, should I go back and like, nah, it's fine. It's like okay. Um, did you have Corpus Cure on your list? I did I, not. I didn't either. But I mean, I found I find the lore about going to uh, uh, what is it called? Tell fear. What's the actual tell, tell fear? fear. Tell fear. I like the. I feel I feel like the the quest itself isn't great, but I do like the whole uh, yeah environment I, of it. I like. Oh, you like the environment? I thought the I thought the like the, the, the corpusarium. You liked going down. No, in no, Maralda? not, or not the, the or environment. The I should say I should say like the uh, individuals in the environment. Basically, how they're oh. all clones. Oh, you! Oh, you like Diveth Furs? All, all of his daughter wives. Yeah, yeah. Weird. It's so da- weird. Daughter clone wives. He grew them from his own DNA. So they're his daughters, but then he also married them. Very, very. Strange, a little bit of a narcissist. But, but he, uh, narcissist that like uh, in, he's incestuous when you think about. It. Oh, is yeah. it incestuous if he's if it's yourself? That's like that's like a that's like a weird that's a good er, that's a weird early aughts meme. It's like if if you have sex with yourself who's a girl like is that it's like no no we're not we're not going there. It's like <laughs> he's well, messed up, but he's also but he's also like a thousand year old mad uh, mad mad wizard scientist. So like it's kind of natural he feels unbound by our morality. Yeah, the dwarf in the basement kind of helps too. Yeah yeah, the but last he, dwarf. He, he he's mostly a good guy even if he doesn't. Even if you don't learn anything, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, spoiler alert. I mean, obviously we're spoiling everything we talk about. But from what I can tell, the dwarves zero summed by realizing that they were in a video game. <laughs> from like everything that I read, it seems like the dwarves are like, "Oh, we're characters in a video game," it, which is like the I realized that I just realized that I'm not real, and so like, you just disappear as a result. That, so that's meta. what it seemed like to me. And like no one told. His name's Yagram Begarn. And he was in some pocket dimension. No one ever told him that. So he comes back and he's like, where is everybody? But no one's around to tell him that he's not real, so he still exists. Like, that, that, that's the stuff that Marco Kirkbride was writing because he was on shrooms. The same way that Frank Herbert was on shrooms when he was writing Dune. Well, this is Dune, part not, I'm sorry, wrong, wrong not podcast. Part, yeah. Wrong podcast. But uh, for, for honorable mention, I think this is three for mine because mm-hmm. I talked about, yeah, yeah. We got most of mine with just like the uh, go by, by going between our lists, so yeah, you can okay. shoot off some of yours now. I actually would go with, um, oh, I guess I'd have to go with the Battle at Mature Dams. Um, this one is, it, I like this one because of the voice acting, which is like very strange to say for a Morrowind quest. Yeah, but. There's a late. This, it's a fighters guild quest. You go to a, a dwarven ruin in the southeastern part of the island. Um, <clears throat> she's basically uh, searching after this one uh, daedroth, and she wants you to help her kill it. And she's like, "Listen, she's the daedroth is mine, but you're gonna help me with this." Um, and all throughout, uh, you can, f- for some reason, she's an imperial, but like her voice actress is uh, is the same as the Breton ones. So you can tell mm-hmm. there was something going on there. But also, the weird, uh, very in-depth amount of voice acting and talk about, like, I can feel her presence. You know, be sharp. We have to be really careful with this. Uh, I remember reading somewhere that that quest was actually supposed to be somewhere in the main quest, which is why they gave it, like, such lavish attention, which almost none of the other Fighters Guild quests have that special voice acting uh, quality to it. I wonder if it was Todd Howard because apparently the, his like when he wrote specific quest for Morrowind, they were uh, di- dialogue heavy. They were voice oh, acting. Okay, were they? I mean, it's not it's not dialogue in which she talks to you. It's just like NPC barks. No, but I mean the voice acting was more prominent yeah, 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 yeah. in the stuff that Todd Howard worked on. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, so. I could see that, but what, looking at it as a, a on its own, it it doesn't have anything to do with the main quest. So I'm so whatever. It would have had to have been like an early thing that wasn't super important that would have like just kind of led you to the main quest. And I, I figured I'm this is all pure speculation, but I imagine they would have just thought like why don't we just start them on the main quest instead of leading one this wild goose chase. Uh, but yeah, that was yeah. fun because the, the Breton voice actress really went all out and made it feel super epic. As well as being able to mm-hmm. find not 
artifacts, but unique, uniquely enchanted weapons. There's one dwarven spear that gets this special name, but when you equip it, uh, you get like ten points of light. You just start emanating light, and it's like that's a, that's a nice little like a, oh you don't have a torch, we'll bring the spear along with you instead. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's, it was a constant effect thing too. Uh, it, it, it the amount of detail added to that quest made me want to learn more. It made me made, mm-hmm. it made me wonder like you know what else is going on here because the 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 lady says I've I've tracked this Daedra all across Tamriel, all across this continent, and then she's holed up here, and I'm going to kill her. And <laughs> once you kill her, she's like, all right, there's a... Or once, once you kind of let the, the lady kill her, she's like, there's a... I, I feel uneasy, even though we've won. Leave me. I must I must consider what happens next. And it feels she feels almost like this Gandalf kind of, like, wise yeah. mentor figure. But that's it. You never see her again, and the quest is over nothing else comes out of it. Yeah, I wonder how many of those quests, the the unique quests were made in early development but then whenever they saw the scope of the game they were like, we can't do this Mm -hmm. in this amount of time. Yeah, yeah. That was a good one though because, like, I didn't have that even on my honorable mentions. I had completely forgot about that quest until... It's one that that always sticks out at me just because I still, I can still hear the lady screaming like, I've come for you! Show yourself! And uh, like, he, like I remember, I was getting hyped. I'm like, "All right, let's do it. We're we're here to fight." And uh, it ends up being not not a huge deal, but you know, it's it's fun. She she gets me. In the, she gets me. Uh, that that voice actress's performance got me immersed into the world. Um, what is your next? So I would I, deb- I deliberated between this one and the Urshalaku burial caverns. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, I pick, and this is my my fifth one. I pick the the quest for the thieves guild, where you have to buy off or kill the fighters guild leaders um, because yep. they're they're in with the Kamenatong, and the Kamenatong wants to kill the, the thieves guild. The one where you have to go to the upper part of the island, off the coast, to a place called Ald Resdane. No, Ald Redania, Sorry. Old Resdane mm-hmm. is what Marwan used to be called. Old Res or Old Redania, and you have to pick up this artifact of I think it's Sanguine's. Mm-hmm. I think it's Sanguine's artifact. It's called the Bitter Cup. No, it's Clavicus Vile. Sorry, it's uh, Clavicus mm-hmm. Vile's Bitter Cup, which it's a unique uh, goblet with two with that, that has two handles. It's pure gold. It's filled with some liquid, and every time you pick it up, it asks, "Hey, do you want to drink the Bitter Cup? If you drink it." Uh, you get 20 points added to your highest ranked attribute, but it also takes away 20 points from your lowest value attribute. Now, there's almost no reason to ever do that, mm-hmm. um, just because you can never raise an attribute above 100 using this method. Yep. And by the time you get to this quest, like the only reason I could think of would be if you spec highly into luck for whatever reason you would do that there's no there's no reason to to use luck as anything but a dump stat but if you had like if you you could start i think theoretically you could start with 50 luck if you went straight to aldredania from the starting point drank the cup and got like 70 luck that'd be kind of cool right but yeah. the problem is you one you auto fail that quest so by the time you get around to it it's like well now you can't you can't like peacefully persuade her you have to kill her mm-hmm. um fire eye i think her name was she's the balmora fighter skill leader um so that 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 kind of takes away some interesting aspect of it uh but one but still the fact that, well, well, I'm, I'm not finished getting to the bitter cup is the fun part because there is i think if i remember correctly it's a skeleton war wizard Mm-hmm. He's like a special skeleton enemy. You don't see him anywhere else. He's called a skeleton war wizard. He's he's got a bunch of other skeletons with him. It's in this mausoleum, Telvani tomb sort of base thing because the Telvani all, all often use tombs as their bases because they're all necromancers, and they just don't and they, they just don't care. <clears throat> but um, the the war wizard also has the the relic, or sorry, the, the artifact 
the vampiric ring, which is not super amazing, but it's it's cool. It's got like this bright yeah. red design. Um, it, it's very it's very flashy looking, and it it stimulates the imagination as to what what is this. And when I first got to Aldredania, um it was like the the weather was very foggy. So it mm-hmm. felt like the fog just like slowly you you pierce through the mist, you get to this weird place and like there's a skeleton shooting arrows at you so you kill him. But then once you get inside, it's this collapsed half flooded structure. You find these weird unique skeletons, you get a, you get an artifact from it and then you you progress further and you get to like this really ob- obviously very important uh, artifact that even if the the uh, the actual artifact isn't super valuable and you're better off just keeping it as a trophy in your home if you don't mm-hmm. end up doing that thieves guild quest uh, it's the atmosphere and the visual storytelling were very uh, stimulating to the imagination and I felt very immersed I feel like um, if I remember correctly, I had done that quest at a lower level, mm. and it was actually pretty challenging. Yeah, um, I can imagine it would be. When you, when you're a higher level, it it doesn't you kind of blow, blow past it. But um, there's scal- one, there, like, there's one there's a, there's one quest that as I was talking about it, I thought of, but didn't didn't do it just because it was too much too combat heavy, and that's retrieving Barrelzar's maze band. Because where was that? That was in where was it again? That was in Tribunal. Okay. Uh, where you have to retrieve the ring. Um, Who has it though? Was it the? Uh... He, he he was the 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 unique skeleton with a Daedric Claymore who like would hit you with a spell that would like give you a hundred percent blind or something, along with like poison and. Paralysis. Oh yeah, I remember that. And now. like if he hits you with it, everything goes dark. You can't move, and he just rushes you with a giant claymore and just like butchers you, like. Mm-hmm. But all like well, like when you actually fight him, he. You can tell that this NPC's model was given a lot of attention because he looks much different, and it f- it it tells you that like that this guy was someone important. He's not just a generic skeleton, which is what the, the skeleton war wizard in Aldredania is, by the way. He's a, he's yeah. a generic skeleton. I, I'm pretty sure he just has a different name, but the overall atmosphere was better. And I didn't they have skeleton warlocks in uh, or something like that the with liches. like skeleton. The liches, the liches yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, I also didn't put... I, this was on, on the, the runners-up, but it was, like, number six or seven. Yeah. The Crimson Plague, which is also a tribunal uh, quest where you fight a lich. So I, I, you can kind of tell I have a thing for the undead, I guess. But um, yeah. you can only access this if you've gotten far enough in the main quest. For, for Tribunal, much like the Utrecht slaying in um, in Blood Moon, but if you you, you get to um, you, you get to like a tomb and it because like oh it's weird this is a uh, some st- you can smell like you can smell the rotting stench of death but it's different it's strange you get this little pop up um, and go going through this almost not quite detective story was was fun. <clears throat> um, Although, if you want, like, and uh, the the robe of the lich you get at the end is completely yep. worthless, uh, because if you use it, you die instantly. Even if it gives you, it gives you like a ton of magicka for like one second. So, like, how would you use this? But um, but also like does like three hundred to six hundred points of damage to yourself. So it's like, why would you want that? that? Reminds me of the uh, the robe in uh, the Skull Village. When you find that the yeah. one guy's been practicing the necromancy and you can't, but it gives you it gives you sun damage. So if you mm-hmm. if you like sleep with it out in the open, you just die when you wake up. Die, yeah. Yep. We did that a couple times, I think. Um, yep. Actually, it's funny because I was talking about detective quests. Um, there is the detective quest in in Blood Moon, which is a lot of fun. Uh, mm-hmm. But ultimately, once you figure out, um, w- once you figure out what it is it's it's very simple when you're going through it and you're learning more about the village which is what the quest is for to learn more about the, mm-hmm. the, the people in the village uh it, it does it's, it's very interesting but once that genie's out of the bottle it's like you can't put it back in it's like oh so and so was accused of stealing furs well that's that's a really bad crime punishable by death 
go to the per- like I just oh but like this guy is jealous of that dude's wife which is why he accused him go to their yeah. house find note oh they were having an affair present evidence all right that's there it. we Gone. go yeah it's all it's, I, it's, I was gonna mention easy. wormhole because because uh, before mi- we get mystery off wormhole, story, though mystery stories are are one and done the uh po- I always liked uh messing around with the poison or the poison dart gang oh um, you like them the black gang this, well. Well, I didn't like them as a, like... Oh, you liked flooding their chamber. Well, no, no, no. I thought it was, like, really unique because if you face them head-on, even if you're a higher level, it can be difficult just because how much damage they do. But I like how they put in the alternative where if you sneak around and you find that lever, mm-hmm. then you can just flood the whole entire cavern and kill them all. Well, if we're going to talk about flooded caverns and, and really, really dangerous people, I liked the the, the quest line in, in, in Tribunal where the lady is, like, crazy... Yeah, and she has all those weird like dwarven trap con- uh, contraptions, and when you finally get to her, uh, you you see that like this person has just been driven insane. But like by what? Yeah. I don't I don't think you ever learn what no, it is. You know. She's just nuts. It's just like oh, and, and when you kill her, it feels it feels it felt can... like such a, a suspenseful dramatic story. I enjoyed it. Did you know about the game break that's associated with that quest? If, if you if you search your corpse, you get 50 really powerful ebony arrows. If you take them all, but you don't dispose of the corpse, then you look in the corpse again, there's 50 more. I exploited yep, that yep. to get like 500 of those. Yeah, and, yeah. And I got after I did that, I was amount. like, one, I'm close to being over-encumbered, and two, yeah, this is kind of game-breaking. Like, I should, like, all right, we're done. And I left. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder why they never patched it. You know what I mean? Patched it? What like, why did the team... Like, like, do, like, a patch for the game in think, order to solve some of the issues. Well, okay, once they sell it... Okay, okay wait, wait, wait. It, It's different because it's not a live service model anymore. Or, or it wasn't a live service model then. Yeah, I realized that now. That was such, like, a modern thing to no, I was like, like, what's age, this guy talking about? Like, I said, dude, it was 2003, not, 2000, <laughs> not 2023. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, like... I mean, you, you could argue, like, oh, well, 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 well when they ported it to... To Steam because it, no. it was when it was Windows PC, but when they when it gets ported to Steam, you could argue, oh yeah, shouldn't they have patched, patched that? But at the same time, dude, we all, ha- half the reason we buy Bethesda games are for the bugs at this point. Yeah, and yeah. and there was the Morrowind unofficial patch. Anyway, so like, why do it when everyone who's going to be playing this game is going to look for that patch that's already been finished, made made by your fans for free? And down and, and like download yeah. it. And just pass no. your own game. Like, why would you bother? What's the point? Um, it's part of the magic. I guess. Yeah. I guess one of the uh, two. Oh, sorry, sorry. The question I want two two uh, runners up that I did not include okay. were uh, the master index quest because you got to go to all these different places. On the it, it was a tour of the entire like map and go, and go to all these different places and get a feel for it, which is a nice little crash course in. Like the geography of Vardenfell, and then the other one I didn't pick was Illunibi, the the like sixth house base one where you first get corpus disease. Even mm-hmm. though I really liked the naming convention of the different rooms, and I enjoyed the talk you had with Dagoth Garys, I think his name was, mm-hmm. um, and the fact that you get the fists of Randagulf, which are very very powerful uh, Nordic artifacts in 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 the tomb. Um, the actual uh, uh, aesthetics of the interior don't feel compelling enough or different to where it's anything but a a gauntlet run, and then you get to uh, an ash, not ghoul. He's not an ash ghoul. He's no, I think he is an ash ghoul, isn't he? He's not an ash zombie. He's not an ash yeah. slave. He's an ash ghoul. Yeah, he's an ash, he, he's an ash ghoul who doesn't look anything different. He's just some named guy, and Big author has given him a message, and he gives it to you, and then you he, you kill him, and you get corpus, and that's it. Um, you don't get to I'm see to... any of the remains of all the people who were supposedly killed there, which is unfortunate. Oh, I had I had a runner up, but I can't remember the name of the quest. Um, what was it about? It was the one where you sell the Telvani slave to the uh, oh, owner oh, of the camp. Oh, yeah, when you have to get the Zainab Nerevereen thing, even though you do everything he asks, he's like. Well, yeah, you you did the thing that I asked you to do. But, like, you know, shouldn't you give me a gift? I know, I want a highborn Telvanni bride. 
And it's like, yeah. no one's gonna do. No, like no, no, none of those people want to marry see, you, you old, you old coot. So you just get a slave girl and you dress her and you give her perfume and like this satisfies him. It's more. It's more like <clears throat> I guess that quest is like the actual mechanics of it aren't actually that like you know different than like a normal quest where you go around and you know a it's, best quest. It's essentially you're just this, fetching a person. It's, it's it's an escort mission. It's no. It's essentially no different from the mission where you escort the Ahamusa wise woman to. Um, all that one's too broken to, to for me to pick. Up. It's too broken. That one's too broken. For, like, like yeah. I mean, I hate when NPCs follow. Oh. It's, like, very difficult. Yes, yes. I, I tend to do... And it's quite a distance. I tend to do those kinds of escort quests when I am not so overleveled and so fast that, like, I just completely outstrip uh, any NPCs. The thing is, though, if you're that far along the, the main quest, you're going to be leveled somewhat. Yeah, I, that's that's why, like I, I tend to the do end. the main quest rather rather quickly. For that yeah, reason. do it first. Um, Although that does feel a little bit like somehow my character get, gets in and just immediately knows everything that's going on, so he's just kind of speed running it. It's like, that's not exactly what you want. It's kind of sad that some of the Morag Tong quest i like i didn't ha wasn't able to have on my list because they're literally just assassin yeah, assassinating it, it's people go to x place kill y person present well, z piece of paper that exonerates you entirely i think that i think they were limited on what they could do because they didn't like think of, or have time to like make it where like i remember in oblivion with the uh dark brotherhood quest there oh, yeah, there's these ways whole, you could kill people well there's also the whole like i mean the oblivion quest of the of like where it was basically just an in that and then there were none parody that was amazing, but also the interfaction drama of there is some traitor. There was there was a traitor in the Morag Tong, but he he was a he was a he like a he wasn't a traitor so much as he just like quit. And it's like there is no quitting this job. So you poison him, he died. That's it. Okay, yeah. like that's that that's the most we ever got to. Um, um, the, more interesting I know... is the one where you, is the quest where you have to go to Ald Safa and kill the leader of the Dark Brotherhood in in Vardenfell. Because she has, like, these weird uh, Daedric darts, which I don't think you can really find in many other places. Um, the Imperial Legion quest, um, the only... the uh, I like the initial quest with the, the Widow. Mm, I think that's yeah. cool, how you find the yeah. axe. Yeah, remember as kids, we always just killed the Widow because, like, we didn't understand what the quest was asking of us? Yeah. 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 That was funny. Was, I, I, I Actually, I do remember taking that quest and you were like oh don't don't worry like j like just kill her it's easier and i was like all right so like you kill her and no one ever says anything <laughs> uh, no one no, ever imagine what, you you never get imagine what that would be like it. if marwin was real imagine if, if if like that had really happened in a real I mean, fantasy universe. i mean it totally like you just it totally fits like corrupt uh old doddering uh bureau bureaucracy doesn't care if so-and-so dies for for its like land development, it just it's like all right, whatever you got it taken care of, nice. Like wow, you're more efficient than the other good, people. Good, right good here. to go. But like doing the actual right thing is like, oh, you went to all that trouble. Like all right, okay. Yeah, the imperial. <laughs> I like some of the imperial cult quest. Um, I believe they had the the what is it called going to Mount Can. That was the imperial cult where you go and you basically have riddles with a. The three, no, that like was, the that, that, storm, that was, that was the or was that temple? That was temple. Temple. That no, no, quest no. was fun, but again, no, um, it's like an... the Imperial cult wants you to, to go to Mount Can, but it's like either on the western side or the eastern side of the mountain. There's a dead guy. Go and retrieve his stuff. That that that. But so you do go to that area. But yeah, the riddles are nice. Uh, I prefer. But it's it's just, it's. I'll be honest. The problem is that I didn't understand the riddles at first. I understood, like, some of them, but the last one, where it's, like, the logic puzzle, I did not bother with that. I, I read the book for the answer, and then just selected the right answer, and I was like, alright, I don't feel I don't feel smart, I just feel like I cheated. <laughs> not not to go back to it, but the, uh, that was what was cool about the, like, the, uh, Skull Village, like, uh, proving yourself at Skull Village, is you had the map given to you mm. of where the different stones were, but they didn't, like, exactly identify where things were. Right, So right, it right. was, like, that added to the immersion. Um, because now you have immersion. The, because I, I remember the amount of times I'd look at the, the world map, the mini-map, the world map, then look at, like, the map in my inventory, to cross-reference it, and then, like, close both and look around, like, it's supposed to be right here. Like, what's going on? 
I like speaking of that. I liked how you had to find it. wasn't It's not the tomb of the incarnate. Um, I'm trying to think. Cavern of the uh, incarnate. Cavern of the incarnate. I thought about that. One, I thought that but, that was cool. I, I hate. I hate picking up the ring, and then all of a sudden Az- Azura's voice just like shatters my eardrums. I hate that. Yeah. So, like, I, it just jump scares me every time. I'm like I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Ah. I, I just like how you can talk to the old people who thought they were the chosen. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, that was They're nice. chosen for the role. Oh, I mean, like, and then they no, all like, wait, like of like the seven people there, only two of them say that. Like three or three, at least, at least like one or two is like, yeah, I had no idea what any of the stuff was. I just died. Yeah. <laughs> but like, the, here's the, my glass axe. I know, right? Yeah. But like the, the the people who were like, I thought I was the one. I was wrong. You are the one. It's like, all right, that's pretty cool. Um, so to, I was gonna say. So I kind of wanted to end with talking about like what draws you into Morrowind and what would draw, you know, like if you would recommend modern gamers going back and playing Morrowind, uh, just, I guess, what's drawn you in and what would you tell other people about it if they were interested? Morrowind is, I would definitely not go in for the combat. I think I've done enough, uh, enough commenting on that now. Uh, by now to to not give you the false impression that I somehow believe the pseudo dice roll pseudo internal dice roll that the game does to determine whether or not your arrow that passed through that guy's head counts as a hit or not <laughs> is a good idea <laughs> it is, is fun that's not, not rewarding gameplay there is a workaround with that with the exploding arrows but that shouldn't you shouldn't have that in my opinion mm-hmm. if I were recommending Morrowind it would be to someone who is tired of uh, role-playing games taking place, fa- fantasy role-playing games taking place almost entirely in either what is essentially rural Japan or essentially medieval England. If you mm-hmm. want a place that feels totally alien, totally foreign, because you had Dark Elves before, but the Dark Elves were considered dark because they had done bad things. The dark was, mm-hmm. was metaphorical, spiritual. The Dark Elves now are... The, you know, the reason the Dark Elves are ash-colored with red eyes is because they're cursed. That's a curse. That, that, that is a racial mm-hmm. curse that Azura put on them. Um, which is like... like that's, that's crazy. A lot of... Um, a lot of RPGs with, with lore will have very clear good guys and bad guys, and they, it, they kind of pull their punches when they talk about really, really bad stuff. When they talk about stuff mm-hmm. that would be very sensitive to, at least to like a Western, a Western audience, they will talk about racism, they'll talk about slavery, they will talk about politics, they'll talk about religion, and they'll talk about <coughs> almost every, every single aspect of it in very unflattering terms. Nobody gets away with looking like no one gets away squeaky clean. Everyone is is some level of gray in their morality. And that can be nice, that can be interesting if you really want to uh immerse yourself in in like the politics of or sorry, in, in like the culture of a completely different uh world. But then they very, I, I think, cleverly not put that front and center and the the very, I don't want to say I don't want to lean on the word originality too hard, but the very strange and alien nature of this, I'm looking at the map again, of this, of this uh, island that can at the same time have just like barren craggy ash wastes on one part but then you cross a mountain range, and all of a sudden there's like a leafy green, not deciduous, but like savanna-like forest. And mm-hmm. then you go a little bit further east, and all of a sudden there are giant mushrooms coming out of the ground. Meanwhile, if you go west, you get a very like swampy, almost tropical, bog-like area. Um, you go to the north, and yeah, there's Solstein, but that doesn't really count. You go to the north, and you find... Um, instead of it uh, differing in terms of uh, like ecology, it's just like a bunch of smaller islands broken up. Mm-hmm. So now it's now the whole like that whole area feels much more aquatic without having to be like tropical or, or marshy. 
um, you go you go south and it feels it feels a lot like uh, and that's just that that's just the geography. That's because I have Dune on the brain. But then you look at the yeah. actual cultures there. You have the duty and honor bound House Rhetoron, which honestly feel like a mix of they feel like they feel a bit like Fremen from Dune. A bit stuck in yeah. their ways, but, but very good at fighting. Then you have House Lalu, which are the very like decadent, westernized merchant class. And then you have the Telvani with all like their weird mushroom houses. And they're just the crazy wizards who do whatever they feel like. And mm -hmm. that's just that. Those are like political factions. Then you go into like the religious factions, and the temple is everywhere except in Telvani areas because no, none of the Telvani are religious. They don't. They're like. You're, Religion is about telling me what to do. I joined Telvani so that no one would tell me what to do. Get out. Um, Hualu tolerates religion because you know they like to sucker people who are are into religion. And House Rhetoron loves the temple because they're like intertwined. They both believe in the yep. same things. Then you have the Imperial cult, which is mostly confined to the westernized cities because none of the the entrenched native indigenous population actually believe in these things. Like yeah, mm -hmm. the, the, they're not like good people though. Like you shouldn't you shouldn't worship Akatashi. He's, he's not a good person, and that doesn't get focused on a whole lot. But then you have the central conflict of like, did Vivek, Sothasil, and Almalexia kill Nerevar, or is that just like sensationalized? And I guess that's uh that that's kind of giving something away. But having this interplay of politics and strange geography with alien culture that doesn't feel like it's 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 not like a world that throws its arms open to you and says, please come play me. It's like, you know, filthy Enwa. You, you, know, you can play this game if you're worthy. It's, it, you know, that can, well, be, that, that can be fun. And the exploration, the atmosphere, even with the very dated graphics, very dated 20-year-old graphics, which were decent, okay at the time, yeah. and haven't aged well, uh, still, it's, it's magical. I, I, I will not I, lie and say that none of this is nostalgia. A lot of it's nostalgia. But if you if that sort of thing, if you as like a modern gamer w could go back and enjoy the original Deus Ex, you could probably go back and enjoy Morrowind. If you found yourself enjoying this podcast or are interested in future TV reviews, leave a like below and become an archer by subscribing to the channel.